I'm trying to get her to help me with my. Uh, so I have uh, I have like 13 uh, second grade Gilman guys um, in the after school program. And so far, so good. Um, but with that many people and with the kids being like that young, I kind of need a, I need a hand for like, just, just in case something, you know, if there was some kid that had a problem, like you gotta yeah. you need somebody to like take care of that while I'm doing like the rest of the class. Anyway, so everything's been fine. I just want, I'm hoping that, uh, she can help me. Um, anyway, um, that is so whatever that's what's going on with stace um so with these guys um there's like a lot of movement you know there's there's obviously these two bucks um and one of the things that he did in the other painting um in the rest of his paintings um pretty consistently um was to have like a backlit subject and then a front lit subject and the one i was the one i think i was thinking about you know, mostly was the, that bull that was like standing on the edge of the, you know, that, the dark bull that was backlit. And then he was walking up the ramp. That's annoying that I did not save it to my photos. <clears throat> it won't take long to get. This guy. So this is the, this is a backlit bull. So um, the whole right, the side that's not facing us is all lit up. And that's what's going on here with the, the bull that's laying on the ground. She's lit from the side. Um, so you can see this side's in shadow, that side's in light. He's walking towards us up this hill and is completely in shadow. Um, so he plays that off of one another, you know, quite a bit. So this deer here, which I think we should draw this deer first. Um, well, I'm gonna put the, the tracing paper down and you know break it down and analyze it. Um, you know, kind of the gestural movements that exist between both of them. You know, like you know, this body rolls into that. You know, like there's relationships, you know, enclosures that are happening um, between the two figures. So it's really important that we get. Um, you know, this, the one that's on the ground, we can like use him as a solid block. Um, and then we can, and, and he's the holding his ground where this one is like a little bit more gestural and flowy. So we got this, like this mass versus this gesture <clears throat> and it's the same, you know, it's the same body parts and stuff. So we're going to get, it's basically the same deer, um, but, but from different angles. So that'll be like, part of what will make it a useful study is that we're going to, we'll draw, you know, deer parts from one angle and then we'll draw deer parts from, you know, another angle and we'll see how, um, you know, it's just almost like an opportunity to do, to, to master one subject from, from two different positions and it'll like drive those ideas um, <clears throat> home even further. Um, so, yeah, and this one is definitely the one to start with. Can you see how it makes this like trapezoidal A-frame here? There's another trapezoidal A-frame and then, you know, it blocks out like his spine is flat, you know, and level out because, you know, both of his legs are creating that like solid four point stance <clears throat> um, on the ground. So, um, you know, the neck is bent and curving um, and angled in, um, but his position on the ground, I think is going to be very stabilizing. And if we can establish that in our drawing, then we'll be able to play, you know, find the two point stance of, the light stag um, and then get the, the the diagonal angle of the rib cage and then show the curve of the neck into the head. Um, this is more showy. You know what I mean? This is like, this is the stag you see first. Um, but what gives this stag all the movement, the fluid, the fluidity and the, um, you know, the, 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 the gesture um, is played off of the stable uh, stagnant, um, well-established firm firmly gripped to the ground stag on this side so the the spirit of both of these deer um in addition to playing off of the the light um stag against the dark stag the solid stag against the moving stag um and i and you know there it's the the nature of each one of these deer um is a different a different stages of reaction i think you know they there's got to be a point where 
you know, one deer is moving, the other solid, the other deer st st holds his ground, the other one's moving. Um, and I think if you study, you know, the behavior of these deer, um, that would become, I think that would become apparent. I think there's, there's nothing, there's nothing you could say, um, if there's nothing you could say about, um, you know, this artist, uh, Potter, is that he definitely is in tune with nature and has observed it, you know, for lots of like over, you know, long periods of time. You know, and, you know, the, the painting of uh, the bull is certainly um, an example of that. <clears throat> so by studying animals, you're not only understanding them in freeze frames, you're also understanding them, you know, over time and getting kind of a dynamic sense of um, their behavior. So not only are you capturing kind of the fundamental elements of what what makes up the anatomy and the structure of the deer, but also what is their you know what are their behaviors. So there's lots of types of behavior of the of the, uh, the of the deer that he gets into. Um, but this is the um, this is the competition. I wonder if this is like an actual process, um, like stage one, stage two, stage three, because you know re we remember what's off screen over here the you know the winner of this match gets to get the the dough and then the um or the fawn rather yeah it gets the what is it is that a doe is a female deer and then the fawn is the baby yeah yeah Definitely. so this is all this is all part of the deer's kind of mating ritual so there's the competition and then the victor and then procreation that's kind of neat um all right cool so we're gonna almost forget about this, the white stag for the moment. Um, and we'll see what we can do about the, um, you know, the stable stag, the stable dark stag. <clears throat> so I'm gonna break down the analysis with um, the, like the, the, the Sharpie. Um, and this may or may not be how we actually begin the drawing. So I, you know, the nice thing about the analysis is that you got to figure out what everything, every figure out what is all there, um, and then you can develop a strategy on how to start the picture. So one of the things that just like keeps standing out to me um, is the top of this pelvic block, this trapezoidal pelvic block, um, and in the middle, you know. So we're obviously going to need to know where the middle of every form is what's the middle of the head the middle of the rib cage the middle of the pelvis um you know those three the spine that links those up and you know the middle of this trapezoid you get the sacral triangle and then that leads into um the tailbone which in this case does not tuck in it tuck it comes out and you get the you know the tail so um in the sense that we get the in this in the white stag we have like the start um, you know, the very tip with the nose, and we're going to follow the middle of that head, um, go all the way down. Here, we're actually starting from the tail, as if that were the, not the ending point, but it's actually the starting point. Then we're going to follow the spine back up, um, all the way back to the top of the head, if that makes sense. Um, all right, so this trap is, oh, Stacy decided to join us. It's nice. Let's see if she We'll see if her audio connects. Sometimes the audio takes a little while. Mm. Yoo -hoo. Hi, Stacy. We got the whole gang hey. back together. Stephanie. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. Morning. Hey. Hi. Um, all right, Stace. We're um, you haven't missed much, actually. What? Um, all we're all we've done is build this uh, trapezoid of the yes. of the of the tail of like basically the the, the pelvis. So this is okay. the anterior. No, this this the superior. There's anterior. Oh man! I don't, like, so the asis is the 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 hip bone in the front, which is the. Mm -hmm. And the anterior superior iliac spine. So anyway, the, the pelvic bone arches this way and it ends in the back with the top of the pelvis and the pelvis juts out and you get basically the base of the butt bone. So um, it's the bottom of the pelvis where it gets wider. 
So we, in this trapezoid, Stacy, we established the center so that we could find where the tail is going to exit the uh, the pelvis, you know, the tailbone yeah. out. Um, and I, what I was really trying to do is find the side of the pelvis as well. So we can turn that into a block. It's going to be a very yeah. narrow block and we're going to be able to build the legs off of that. But like any figure, it's healthy to get the three major masses, which is the pelvis, the rib cage, um, and the head. Now in humans, the head is, uh, the neck, the head and the shoulders are really close together, the rib cage and the head, and oftentimes they overlap. So the neck becomes a minor mass, um, in these larger animals, especially four quarter, you know, four legged animals. Um, the neck is bigger and stronger becomes its own mass. So we're going to like, we're gonna have to find that too. So we do the pelvic block, then we're going to follow the rib cage. It kind of S curves up to our scapula and the scapula mm -hmm. is the, um, you know, these two bones that angle up. So we're going to get the spine from the pelvis, um, to the ridge of the scapula. And then that ridge is one big, um, kind of like structural beam that holds this epic rib cage. You know, all of these ribs are attached to it. And then they are the cage with which they hold the heart, the organs, the lungs. Um, you know, that ends a little bit and there's a soft belly under here, but it's still, this is a big oval um, of that major mass for the rib cage. Um, from this little um, girdle, shoulder girdle of the scapula, the um, spine continues this curve and it's gonna go up the neck and then it's gonna hit the back of the cranium. So we're gonna see this little bulge, looks like almost like the top of a heart. Um, it's the very back of the skull. Um, so the neck is gonna make a ridge from the shoulder girdle up to the skull. And then you're gonna see the side plane of that neck. Man, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Very helpful. Good. Um, the back of that, the top of the, 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 the cranium there, um, it's got so much interesting stuff. Um, we're we're going to get the start of the antlers. And then below that, we're going to get the um, shape of the ears. If any of you have ever drawn Pikachu, it's a similar mm -hmm. shape as Pikachu. Um, I, I was in class yesterday with like fifth guards. So like, have you guys ever heard of Pikachu? And like, they exploded. Yeah, like they were like offended that I would even ask that question. <laughs> I guess I could have anticipated that. Um, all right. So the legs are fantastic and you've got to put yourself um, like the same way that we would do deer is the same way that we would do horses, which is the same way we would do dogs. And that is to put yourself into um, your own frame of reference and, re and relate it back to the human being. They're all mammals. So the bone structure is actually very similar and it makes it way less confusing if you can you know, assimilate the parts um, of the human to the animal. So we've got this pelvis and we're gonna build the mass of the thighs. So this is hip to knee. And we've got a broad side of the thigh and then a relatively narrow back side of the thigh. So I'm gonna turn that into a block. Then we get this little kneecap transition and it goes knee to ankle. Um, knee to ankle and in this back ankle, this is like all Achilles heel. Now there is some muscle in there um, and you can feel it in dogs. It's just nothing compared to our um, calf, our calf muscle. Um, it, it's like the springiness of the tendons and the bones um, the muscles are, you know, in the thighs. The ratio is completely different. Um, okay, so then um, as we go from knee to ankle, we have this like almost like, you know, there's a joint there. So there's a, you know, some people like to make ovals, you know, that could be one. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the, you know, seeing the back heel and then the side of the heel, like again, trying to make more trapezoidal forms. The trapezoid feels like it's a really, it's gonna show up a lot in this deer. So that's that's kind of where my head is at. Um, the less meaty 
any part of the anatomy, um, the more concave it is. So if you think about a bone, just like right here, like, you know, like the femur, you know, without any muscles, the femur is concave, it angles in. And then these muscles, the way they attach, they grow, they swell out. So the, the healthy meat, the fur, that swells <laughs> out. Tendons, bones, they concave in. So from um, the ankle to the ball of the foot, it is a concave, um, you know, in this case, it's, it's like more of a shape. Like the thighs have, you know, very clear three-dimensional properties. The scale of this drawing um, being what it is, um, you know, from ankle to the ball of the foot, it's essentially a shape. Um, so it's good, but it's gonna be a pinched shape like this femur um, because there's almost no muscle on it. Um, okay, so it's ankle to the ball of the foot. Then that ball of the foot is gonna give us um, essentially what is like a nut, one knuckle and one finger. So we have this transition finger and then that finger culminates in a hoof, which is like a fingernail. So with the human leg, it's like thighs to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to the ball of the foot as if you're like standing on your tippy toes. And then all of your baby toes are all fused into one big bone and a uh, one big fingernail at the end. So even though it's short and small, you know, you compare it to, you know, it's, it's only one. So it's like one toe. They stay and they essentially stand on one toe and one finger. Um, it's a large one compared to ours. Um, but that, that, that gives you the bone anatomy. So hip to knee, which I, is what I built over here. You know, and he gives us a little texture for the fur. Hip to knee, knee to ankle, and then it pinches in from ankle to the ball of the foot, and then this fused finger, which is convex, into a hoof, which is a little trapezoid. Be super aware of, oh, I guess that's not fur, that's more manhood. Yeah. So these are, you know, clearly male deers going at it. Um, he gives us this shadow, um, which in his own mind, you know, the shadow does probably, the shadow is probably artificial. I mean, he's obviously drawing this out of his head. I mean, he knows these deer so well that he can, you know, piece, piece this together. So knowing the angle from hoof to hoof, and then the angle from this hoof to hoof, then he's able to, in his mind, be able to find the four points with which they all stand, you know, which this uh, deer stands at. And it creates four corners of a box. And that box, that, that plane is obviously in foreshortening. Um, but it's really good to know. And, the, and like the, the feet, where the feet are on the ground actually help describe the ground. Um, Cause there's not a whole lot helping us to show, you know, what this ground plane is doing. There's some of these like, these little fl flicker marks, these little hatch marks that indicate they could be dry leaves. They could be, they could be grass, could be moss, could be dirt. Um, the, the marks of the ground plane are generic. Um, they are in a sense abstract, um, but they, they do what they're supposed to do. Um, okay, back to getting the, uh, the legs in here, um, which, and when I say legs, I actually don't mean legs, I mean um, arms. So we did those legs, now we have to do the arms. <clears throat> Um, I saved, you know, I tried to separate the, the, the inside of the rib cage so that we could then build the, the scapula. Um, it's not a very good view, but we're going to be, you're going to be able to see it in the white stag. Um, what allows deer and, and dogs to walk on our, all fours and why we can't, like we try crawling and it's awkward, um, has to do with the angle of the scapula. The scapula function as another, um, joint and bone um, supportive, um, you know, weight bearing um, joint of the, of the arms. So you can actually see it right here. There's a little notch right here. So this is scapula down to the shoulder and then shoulder down to the elbow and then elbow 
to the wrist, wrist to knuckles, and then the knuckles give you this fused thing. Now, don't draw this right now. I'm just trying to explain that you can't, you, it's hard to see it. Um, I'll actually erase up here so you can see the profile, but um, the, the scapula is everything in cats. You know, you see cats walking and, you know, they're walking at you. And one scapula goes up, the other drops and they run vertical. And so it's an extra bone to walk on. And when we walk, our arms essentially start at our shoulders where their arms start at the scapula much higher. Um, interesting little insight. Okay, let me erase this so we can kind of get a better sense of the profile. Um, so we know that there's um, shoulder to elbow. That's what this is, shoulder to elbow. Then it goes, and the elbow is down here. I'll put a little dot at the elbow. It's at, it's a, essentially the same elevation as the bottom of the rib cage. Then we go elbow to wrist. We'll use a trapezoid. Then wrist to knuckles. We'll use that pinched form that we used from ankle to the ball of the foot. So the uh, trapezoid and then wrist to knuckles. One knuckle means one finger, which means one fingernail. And then we're gonna pinch in at that finger and then add a hoof. Nice. So this Sorry. mark here, yeah, Stace. Just a very quick question. Mm -hmm. Did you, if, am I uh, recalling correctly or understanding that the four fingers are fused together, which make the hoof in addition to the one finger? Yes. Okay. So imagine one finger and then one fingernail. Let me just draw it a little bit larger. Okay. Um, so imagine, I'll, I'll reverse engineer it. So you have the fingernail, which is the hoof part. Then you have a finger part, um, which is fused. And then you have the knuckle, and then that, that, that knuckle is from knuckle to wrist. And then we go from wrist to elbow. And we go from elbow up to the shoulder. And then that shoulder goes up to the scapula. So and that, hopefully that made it a little bit clearer. So there's the hoof, which is one, the finger, which is two, uh, the knuckle to the wrist, which is three, wrist to the elbow, which is four. I'll put a little dot for the elbow there. And then um, elbow to the shoulder. So up here, like deltoids, buys and tries, that's five. And then this angle up here to the scapula, that's gonna be six. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I were to, if I was to pretend to be a deer or a horse. There's all your know, horse kids always try to gallop. Like kids that love horses always try to gallop. It's if you're not built to do that. Um, all right. Boom, 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 boom. The last one. So this might be a nice time to actually do that. Do that. So we have a little trapezoid of the hoof. So you can relate the, um, it, that's kind of cool. And I think he might've even done it that way now I'm thinking about it. So if you have, you know, your back two legs established and then you have the relationship between your, you know, the, the right side legs and then the left side legs, and then you relate the front two legs, you get the hoof pinches into the knuckle, knuckle pinches into the wrist and the wrist is going to go up to the elbow. Um, and that, you know, just that elbow disappears behind the rib cage. <clears throat> and, you know, you can, it's interesting too, because if you check out the weight bearing nature of it, let me erase these numbers here. Um, he needs to put force into the ground here. He's, he's pinching the ground here and he's turning his head, angling to the right, super hard. So he's going, 
he's angling towards the, you know, his, his antlers this way. So in order to dip his head, he has to break and shorten that leg. So the left leg is, you know, not weight bearing and it's bent a little bit so that if this leg bends, then this head tilts down, if that head tilts down. He can angle his, you know, he aims his antlers at the other deer um, and he still needs force to push. So that's why this right leg is all straight and taking on a, um, you know, a weight bearing and, and like almost like a piece push he's going to push off of the ground to you know either hold his ground or thrust into the uh, the white stag nice it's great um i'm going to erase the head one more time just to, just so i can see it um you know, there's this beautiful shape of the neck that, you know, goes from the shoulder girdle up the middle of the spine. So we're seeing the top and the side of the neck. Um, and then we're going to see the ears on both sides, see the, the dome of the cranium in the back, and then the antlers, how they start coming off the side, you know, a slight angle, but we're going to follow that up straight and in, out, up, and in, um, well, the point I was trying to make is that there is this little negative space and I wish I had a different color, but I'm gonna fill it in right here. Um, you know, there's this section here, which is the side of the face. It's like the back of the jaw. So it's, you actually, it's, it's below the ear, it's above the spine of the ribs and it's, and it's, to, and it's in front of and to the left of the neck. See it in there, that little profile of his face? Yeah. You can actually see his eye. You can see the side of his cheekbone. And then I think it actually tucks under, but it's hard to say whether this line is shoulder, neck, or, you know, you know, part of the face. It, all the lines kind of, you know, combine together there. Um, so in the momentum of the lesson, guys and gals, um, should we should we should we analyze the white stag too or do you want to go ahead and draw the the dark stag and then i can reanalyze it later any any suggestions let's just draw, draw the, let's draw the dark one okay yeah cool i think that's a good idea and we'll we'll build up we'll build up some confidence and then we might actually even have deeper insights on the analysis you know having having uh drawn the, the dark stag all right oh so scared fear management is such a nice such a good skill It looks pretty level, right? Oof, my goodness. What did you guys start with? His tail. You just start with the tail? Yeah, his that backside. Yeah. I just kind of started drawing as you were talking about it. Yeah, good. No, I'm glad you did. Um, I'm looking at how far this leg kicks out. Um, yeah. So I, I have to be somewhat aware of like that my, you know, at least this can go here. Um, and then maybe I should fold my paper. Yeah, I'll fold it so I have room on the other side. So I can add, so I can add the white stag. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> that would not be good. So I guess I didn't have to move over that far. All right, great. Seriously. Seriously fun piece. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get in the zone here. So I've got this foot and I really, I really don't, I, I mean, I really don't wanna start the drawing this way but I have to because of my, my uh, the Zoom call nature of you know, the lesson. So if I even start with this foot down here, 
you know, it's foot to ankle, ankle to knee, knee up to the, you know, through the thigh. And then either way, I find my little, my little bum, this little butt bone, and then the tail, which angles up. Um, I really wish I would, I, I want, I want it to be a white tail, you know, like our North American white tail deer. The, the, the tail feels very not, uh, not deer like. Do you, do you feel small. like that too? Very but small. I don't, I don't know European well, deers or. Looks like it's a little bit flipped over, over turning over to the left side. So there might be more of it on the other side. See, because yeah. there's a little hook underneath. Little and little mm -hmm. hole. Um, yeah, the, yeah, I do see that. Um, I wonder if there should have been, I mean, the, the, the tails are almost, you know, the pelvises are like almost perfectly lined up. I mean, that's the contact point between our dark stag and the, and the white stag. We're not quite there yet, but that's that I'm mean, just anticipating moving on to this next one. I mean, look at their their knees are lined up, these thighs, these thighs are lined up, and they're almost, and they're almost like cheek to cheek right there. Um, there's probably a little bit of space between. <clears throat> All right, so from here I can then get my pelvis. The middle of my pelvis, and then this corner of the box. It's so nice having somebody with a solid sense of uh, geometry um, and, um, you know, a mature sense of, um, you know, anatomy as well. Okay. So there's the side that you can really see because of no, the way he lays these shadows, you know, the angle of the pelvis, the vector, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a box, but it's a tilted box. And, you know, we would see a lot more of the bottom of the box, but the, you know, the, the thighs, um, you know, come out from there. I don't want to get too, um, I'm like super excited to get into these thighs because the way that, um, one of the principles that they'll mention in art school um, is this idea of staggering your lights and your darks. So it goes dark to light, dark to light, dark to light. And he's got this silhouetted edge of the thigh which is dark, mm -hmm. then he's got a reflected light, um, which is light. And then he has this plain, this hairy, um, you know, furry plain of that, that, that thigh, which is a dark. And even within that shadow, it goes dark, light, dark. Then we get another channel of light, then a groove, which is like this little dimple, which has, is the actual transition from the muscle into the pelvis that goes dark and then you have the um, another light and then you get the silhouetted edge of the knee you know up against the where the rib cage is passing behind it i mean oh so nice it's so nice again i didn't really want to i didn't want to get too heavy into that because I, I really think it's you know wise to establish um these three masses that's the pelvis um the rib cage Um, and then in this case, it's the neck, which is another mass. So it's really four masses. Um, and then all the way up to the head. So we're going from, you know, head to tail, at least not head to toe, but head to tail. Um, all right. So interesting notes that are coming up um, in, with, um, you know, as I'm, as I'm drawing this. Um, I, there's, there seems to be this, um, I, I really want to find a line. Like, uh, uh, I wish there was a line for, um, that spine. I'm not really seeing it. I mean, the only divot towards the middle I'm seeing is this little dot that's in between the scapula, like this little crease that's in the scapula. And then the top of the back really kind of feels like there's kind of a, a, a quiet light top plane. And then the, like a rounded side plane, you know, it's almost like, it's a um, like the this the the rib cage is like the snake shape. It's like this long cord, like this gestural mass. Um, do you see it in there? It's like it feels really it feels really thick. It's it's nice. And then the um, and then underneath that is where this 
um, you know, the rib cage is hanging and, you know, there's like some ribs, there's some like, you know, protrusion, you know, like rows of marks that I don't know if they're supposedly showing ribs or if they're showing um, uh, like muscles or fur or maybe just like a combination of the two. You know, like you can have a mark that represents, you know, fur growth and a bulge of the of a rib. But I'm, I've got, I've, I've at least got the. It's like it's it feels like a hanging, um, like a hanging fruit almost. You know, like this rounded, um, healthy, um, like apple. It looks like the bottom of an apple. And then, you know, this, the, the, the beam, the beam that is the rib cage um, is the branch. That's cool. Okay, so as we, as we hit the um, shoulders, these two little bumps for the scapula, um, the head takes a really aggressive, the, the neck, I should say, takes a really aggressive turn, um, you know, towards the head. And, you know, this angle here, you know, if you follow, if you look at the angle of the bottom of the ear to the bottom of the ear, I mean, that is like a 45 degree angle. You know, it's, it's really a steep and I, and I, and, and I, I mean, I have to check myself. I mean, I, I keep, I keep trying to sketch the, you know, the head and it's just like, it, it looks, it looks like too straight and it, it because the, I'm seeing the, the head is being flat. Like I'm seeing all these beautiful parallel lines. Um, but I, when you draw the head, you know, you want to draw horizontal because most heads are, are, are flat, but this, this deer is, the head is cocked um, really far. Um, all right. And then, so that's good. I'm, I'm happy with the angle that I chose, even though it might be even steeper than it is. Um, I have to correct times you did have to too yeah i had to keep twisting it more yeah and i feel like it needs to be even further i can't even I use the left ear as my guide and the left ear is so close to the butt that that helped yeah. me place yeah. the look at that yes um so yeah. I've, I've been using in my in my youth classes i've been using these little um I call them demonstration squares, <laughs> so the sticky notepad. Um, but I, I forgot about them and I just found them, so I'm gonna use it again. Um, so the way that the, the ear exits the head, you know, obviously overlaps the head, it's gonna be a small triangle. Then we're gonna have a, a parallel like rectangle, which gets a little longer, and then another aggressive um, angle change. So I'm gonna do a slightly curvy top, see, and then it levels out. And like you said, the, the tip of that ear is like practically touching, um, you know, the top flat part of the, um, the pelvis. And I, you look at how even, even in this sketch, I made it too far apart. Mm -hmm. It's dangerously close. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the three pieces of that ear. Um, let's see this, the, this is the ear probably more in like a profile view where the ear on the top, we're kind of seeing the back end of it. So follow me for one second. We're gonna, we're gonna reverse engineer it. So this is one, this is two, this is three. The ear on the other side is gonna go one, and then we're gonna go two, and then we're gonna go three. And this is the, um, what, I, what, you know, what I really should call is like the Dumbo theory. Um, <laughs> Dumbo had these ears that were, basically turned into, um, they turned into wings. Um, and I can actually show you this really unique example. So in order to have it be a wing, there has to be a structure. So there's this like structural crease that's in the middle. Um, and so the, I would try to err on having, even though it's tricky, even though you, th you think that the top is, is darker, it's actually not. Um, the top is lighter because you're not seeing the side plane along the top. You're seeing the side plane um, on the bottom of the ear. So there's like a thickness. And I know it's tough because it, he doesn't define the planes structurally. He defines them with value. 
So this is the side of the ear. Let me just do a quick sidebar note with the uh, dumbbell. Because you'll you'll it'll become so so obvious when you see this. And it'll be good for for the viewers at home. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna end up with a very long ear. Yeah, me too. Well, <laughs> You can't go, you can't, you know, it's not going to be too long. Um, so, this is what, so this is what I was saying here is like, you get the, the top plane. I know it's reverse. I should like, I should flip it, but you see the thickness of that ear, you know, along the bottom. And then you don't see the thickness because that plane isn't there. So the, it just has to do with our vantage point. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to invert the, not invert it, but mirror it because it's almost exactly the same angle as the deer that we're doing right now, which is so interesting as far as signs go. It could be nothing, but it could be something. Look at the angle of our deer compared to the angle of the, the Dumbo. Wow. It's pretty darn close. <laughs> we could add a little, I mean, look, even look at the, uh, look at the tail and the pelvis <laughs> and the ridge. <laughs> and the blockiness and those thighs that come out. <laughs> wow. I wonder if I wonder if Disney just like ripped it right off of this <laughs> potter here. I mean, not really. Um, look at the um one of the fun parts. I sketched this with the Gilman guys yesterday. And the uh look at the movement marks here. Yeah. Really wonderful, like these echo lines and mm. you know, cross hatching. There's cross hatching on the shading. And there's like exo cross hatching with like the movements and the you know the the angle of the swoop. So the you know Dumbo's flying in the same direction you know mm -hmm. as our as our stag too. So I'm wondering if um, <clears throat> if you know Potter used um, some of those marks in the background to help um, you know stimulate that sense of movement um, in in our in our in our uh, in our deer. And you know whether we can modify our marks too to um, to promote that, you know, promote the higher degree of movement. <clears throat> um, all right, so that's where we close off. And then in this ear, um, it's the, you, the back of the head is going to eclipse the ear, and then above that is going to be the antlers. And then as the back of the head eclipses the ear. The back of the neck eclipses the um, skull. So that's the, the skull is in front of the ear, the neck is in front of the skull. And then the shoulders are in front of the neck. And then that leads us in. Wow, cool. That was a, that was a, that was a playful, that was a playful figure association. So let's see, we have the skull, one two, three, and it looks like it brought me close. Um, between the ear and the, you know, this little wonderful, like I'm like obsessed with the, um, I'm obsessed with the space between all of the, of the back and the it's kind of this cropped lost profile. That's what it is. It's a cropped lost profile. So we have our, um, the bottom of our ear, which has some thickness, and we're going to get the brow, the like the eyebrow ridge. So that's the upper eyelid. And we're going to get this gentle um, cheekbone. And then you're going to come down the length of that, um, you know, the side of the head. I think he's attempting to cut the jawline underneath, but it's, it's too hard to say. So we've got our um, eyebrow ridge, our cheekbone, and then it gets lost. So... What we're really seeing is the, uh, just put it in the wrong place. One of the ways I knew I did it in the wrong place was because of the negative space. You know, there's the, this, the gap between eyebrow ridge, side of the face. And then this, the dome, this arch, um, the big muscle of sterno of uh, either trape, I guess it's trapezius. You know, the trapezius ends And then the face begins. Mm -hmm. All right, we might have to come back to that because mine still looks weird. So I got my head, 
in front of uh, my neck, in front of my head, and then the ear um, behind the skull. Um, I think we're actually seeing it's part of the left eye. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, so, so you think this is actual eye and not brow ridge? I mean, oh, I, I, think add, I was going to add some, you could even, I can imagine that there's like even little eyelashes right there. Yeah, brow ridge, right? With a little yeah. bit of eye. So brow that's, ridge I, and a little bit of eye. I think it would make more sense. Like, and then we'll look to a look over here. We can kind of see how small he makes the eyes. So that's even a stronger case. See those little two dots, you know, that read for the eyes. That that's mm -hmm. even a stronger case for being an eye. Cool. That makes, that makes sense. Which which helps us actually see how far he's twisting his head. Yeah. It does, exactly, exactly, because you're seeing that side plane. My drawing is like looking so much like a goat. It's so funny. Um, so, <laughs> and then for all you, you, you know, for um, everybody with anxiety about drawings, I mean, this is the part where you're like, this is the worst <laughs> thing that's ever been made. <laughs> and this is where you're like, well, I'm just going to keep going. It can't never stop, ends. can't stop, can't stop, won't stop. Um, <clears throat> All right, so the antlers feel so much. I um, wonder if we should even detail the antlers or we should just attempt to um, place them. And I wonder if the antlers should be our, uh, our dessert for having done the, for having done the legs. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I really want to, um, I think I'm happy with the antlers being where they are at the moment. Uh, only because what if we have, what if we put in the legs and we have to change something like hardcore, you know, that there's definitely a chance that we might have to change something that I might have to change something. Um, so that's where, that's where this becomes a little bit tricky. I think, I'm, I think we should go into the legs. We know the legs pretty well. Um, there's nothing. Um, there's nothing surprising about the legs. Um, you know, the reason I think why this is getting complicated in here is because, you know, so much of it is cropped. Like so much, it's in, in such foreshortening. Um, that I'm like, yeah. Get that now I have to drop the ear down so it already it's already happened so I just I just made a move right here because I'm just like trying to figure out why I'm why it's not why it's not like feeling right so I drop this neck down even further and if I drop that neck down even further then the head becomes smaller and then the ears uh the ear has to drop down And then if that ear drops down, then the antler needs to go up. Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully, and the, and the antlers are gonna be so fun that like, I don't wanna, um, I, just, I just wanna make sure they're in the right place so I get them right. Can we collectively agree that we'll, is, are, do you guys support going into the legs? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do, um, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the egg, the legs in um, relative to one another. So, um, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to draw the, um, the, you see the little, there's this little like little circle almost, which is like probably a tuft of hair, but that, um, that little bump happens on the opposite side. So there's like left side and right side. Of course, the tail is you know in the middle. The tail is the middle, represents the middle. Um, and then, so we'll do this, the back thigh, and we're gonna kind of move into the transition into the knee. And then we'll get the um, top of the pelvis, 
this little pinch, remember I mentioned that the pinch was, um, you know, the way, the where the, the thigh transitions mm -hmm. into the pelvic bone, and then we'll get the front of the thigh. Yeah. There's, there's two major bumps, which I believe is the end of the um, thigh slash humerus transitioning into the tibia. And if there was a kneecap, and I think there is one, I think this is it. So there's this little a top bulge and then it concaves in and then a, and a bottom bulge. So this is one muscle bone transitioning into another muscle and bone. Okay, so, and then I can almost set myself up for the side plane, the, in the intense groove of the Achilles tendon, and then the Achilles tendon leading into the ankle transition, which is going to be another um, playing, you know, grouping of bones and muscles attaching to another group of bones and muscles. But this is the right thigh. So now I'm going to do the left thigh. Um, so I can get the you know, again, we've got this like little circle, which is might even been like an orientation point for him. A um, little, little landmark or something that he noticed about the deer. I have never noticed that part of the anatomy, but I'm going to look for it the next time I see one. Um, okay, so we start with that little bump and then we're going to come down this, the back thigh. There's some hair there. So the line gets broken very pleasantly. We get the, the, the thickness of that thigh, which is relatively narrow. You know, on that back plane. And then we get the front of the thigh <coughs> building out this, you know, geometric trapezoid. <coughs> we are so familiar. And we can, you know, then use these parallel lines to shade the inside of that thigh, the inside of that trapezoid. Oh, Mr. Bills, you want some water? You go get some water. I have to show you a video of um, Bailey coming to Starbucks with me and getting a pup cup. Oh, cute. Which is uh, just whipped cream in a small Starbucks cup. I feel like it could go viral if I posted it because it's the cutest. Um, so we did this knee, this the knee transition um, into the um, calf muscle. And again, there are a lot of muscle, calf muscles in here, um, just way smaller and way tighter. So we'll transition into that knee bone, going down into the ankle, and there's a little swelling at that transition. The groove, which is less intense on the inside, it looks like the groove of the Achilles tendon into the ankle, and then the silhouette transition and I'm, I'm doing two things I'm copying his line weight he has this really wonderful like all these great draftsmen have this like pulse where it goes thick to thin thick to thin broken to open you know crisp to soft the line weight if you think about it can only do so much but that's like if you think about a combination lock like a six number combination lock is will keep anybody out really so it's like when you think about the combinations, you have light, you have a light, the, the, the light to dark is one variation, you know, light, mid-tone, dark, and then you have, you know, open and closed, you know, so the line is solid, then it, you know, it breaks. Um, you have thick to thin, so you have a thin line um, to a thin line, vary those. Um, and there you go. I mean, you have three sections with three variations. And it gives you so much life. I mean, there's so much life when you employ those, um, just those, those three variations and having mm -hmm. three variations within them. <clears throat> and as you're copying, the reason to copy is so that you can practice synthesizing Wait. your thinking. And when I say uh -uh. synthesizing your thinking, I'm thinking, you are you have to draw a line with a certain line weight and then it has to represent a particular left brain thinking uh the scientific naming of a piece of anatomy and that's not easy to do and this is like the, the best way to practice that is through copying um and where i had 
initially, you know, I'm, go, I'm here at our ankle and I'm going to the ball. Wait a minute, but, um, I was initially saying that there wasn't much thickness, but the top line um, thickens out and you wind up getting a really delightful um, Boy. So if I use my little demonstration block, initially the shape looked like this. And then because of the line weight, it becomes this, which is so nice. And then this is the Shabbat side. So there is um, a three-dimensional understanding that gets very subtly expressed just through darkening one side versus the other. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Wait a minute, Tuck. How's Tucker, Stace? Oh, I didn't know I was. <laughs> How's he doing? He's being naughty, it sounds like. Tucker, no way. He's a good boy. He'd never be naughty. <laughs> um, I love these little subtle enclosures, these like um, delicate enclosures. So you can follow the whole contour line, you know, down. Um, but then you also have to see the top with relative to the bottom. So this plane to this plane. And the, it's amazing how both things happen simultaneously. Like there is a continuous silhouette around the outside, but each form is constructed um, in context with a, you know, the inside and the outside, inside and outside. I had to teach um, like a, a, young, a group of young elementary school kids and we were talking about, they weren't, we had, were drawing these snakes and you know, the, I didn't. I never boiled down enclosures as simply. I mean, I gave basically the head of the snake an oval, and then the body started to go top and bottom, and then inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. You know, it just keeps <laughs> going. So instead of trying to draw a snake with one continuous line and then do the one continuous line on the outside, you actually construct it in these little sections and you have way more control and you have way more understanding. Anyway, the legs are the same. And then there's this little fused trapezoid and this beautiful hoof seen from the back. Love that little hoof. Now I've gotten myself into, um, I wouldn't call it a pickle, but I, I mean, um, you know, when I connect my, um, you know, the diagonal from back left to back right, you know, I need a gentle separation. So um, this knee and this knee are closer together. So I need to drop this knee probably. And then going from this ankle to this ankle, I need to drop this ankle. And then I drop that ankle, then I can drop, you know, the, the knuckle to knuckle, knuckle to knuckle. And then I can do the hoof. Now they line up. So there's this constant connection between these, um, the relationships between the joints of the, um, of the animal. And if all of your joints line up, then your legs are going to be uh, relational. I don't know how I got that wrong. I really don't. Because I did them. I, I did these legs in this order so that they would be lined up. Who knows? Spectacular. I feel like it's going, I feel like it's happening. 
Um, my legs are taller. Who cares? Um, because when the legs relate to one another, they can be short, long, squat, tall. Um, it, it really, it, it, as long as they relate to the, in, the one side to the other side, um, you're in business. But since I panicked, um, my the beauty of my line, I think I think I think I got seduced by the, the aesthetic of the line weight um, and the variations in the the marks that I, I lost sight of the whole. And that's so common. I mean, that's so so naturally easy to do. That's why having like blocking out the entire structure so that you know it's all relative, and then you worry about the icing. Like bake the cake, decorate it later. <clears throat> cool so i'm i was just thinking about the uh I'm desperate i'm desperate to get into the arms i really really want um you know those arms to match and i and, I, and actually i i should probably place um you know, devise a, you know, a, a loose connection because we have these two hooves. So I should be able to, you know, at least in theory, place the other two hooves, at least estimated where they might, you know, fit on the ground. Um, but again, going all the way to these ending points is is jumping the ship. A little, what is it called? Jumping the shark? Jump ship, jump ship I think. Jumping, jump the gun. Ship. jumping the shark, I think it's the expression. <laughs> um so it's like first things first so like i know where my thighs are i know where my pelvis is and i and i've, I've got something for the rib cage so i'm going to go from in order to get all the way up to the the you know the, the shoulders and the scapula so i can get the next set of legs you know i got to go through the rib cage so i'm going to look at the bottom of the rib cage relative to my knee and the thigh and these dimples you know, they can see these, these clear underplanes, clear underplanes, these beautiful little repeated marks. Um, my, I don't know if you can see this, but my paper, because it's folded, is not flat. So it's popping up and down. And so oh, yeah. I'll make a mark. And then as I move over, it's dragging. You know, you want, you want, you don't want those little, those like little bad, those little, you, know, you want to be able to have flat surfaces. You can make the decisive marks and be in control. Um, I, I just, I'm just talking through everything that's going through my head. Um, so we're riding up the side of the, the structural mass of the uh, spine. The spine has a really nice silhouette. So you have the top of the pelvis and that's gonna be in front of the silhouetted edge of the rib cage. Rib cage dips down in a little bit before we get into the um, scapula, these little two bumps at the shoulder girdle. Cool. And this arc of the shoulder girdle is going to come down and that's what's going to lead us into our, um, the top of our, um, you know, deltoid essentially. And that's good. So I went from the pelvis up the spine into the scapula and related to my deltoid. So I got the start there. Um, then I can come around the silhouetted edge of the belly. The belly at the knee starts to angle down, then it you know, angles up slightly and then it really hooks up hard. And that is the intersection point. Um, you know, this like, it's almost like a Y shape. This is the elbow. This is literally the elbow joint. I always put a circle there. Um, he does a little a dark tick for himself as well. That's the back elbow. And then there's a trapezoidal front. So there's our, there's our silhouette. So we did the elbow relative to the, rib, to the, the bottom of the rib cage. Then we did the deltoid relative to the spine and the top of the rib cage. So shoulder to elbow is established. And we now we have, we know where the edge of our deer is, which is great. Um, so I, I can see that in order for my toes, <clears throat> you know, my legs to match, um, my, you know, my legs are going to be significantly longer. So I just want to anticipate that. So we have the elbow down to the wrist and the wrist down to the knuckles and they kind of span out pleasantly at that knuckle. And then there's gonna be a 
fused finger, and then a trapezoid for the hoof. <clears throat> so I've, I've uh, accommodated for the distortion. Oh, cool, that looks so good. Um, it looks good in the sense that I think the deer look stronger and almost more handsome with like the with the longer legs. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Maybe a penguin. <laughs> I saw a meme where it said, uh, "Being an emperor penguin isn't always." Uh, isn't always beautiful and it had this like soggy brown like adolescent emperor penguin they're brown when they're young and he was like looked so mangy and shaggy and it was I think it was it was cute but, that's right. but he looked like he had really long legs too like long goofy legs what was that Grace? The right foot goes out much further than yeah one expects Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the, the, the waterfall, like this kind of like cascade of the legs. Um, I think you're totally right. Swings out. Um, I had had, I was like, and I, I, I just made that adjustment. It was perfect. Um, I, thought, I thought something was off on my drawing too. And so instead, you know, it wasn't because my leg wasn't out far enough. Um, it was because my shoulders were out too far. So I, by pulling these shoulders in, um, it brings all of this whole thing tighter. Um, and, you know, therefore my leg is standing out further. But there's this, look, do you see the S curve that happens in there? Mm -hmm. Really elegant. Right. Um, and it's a nice plan. It's a nice change to the, you know, these like almost blocky, almost architectural back legs. But even that front left one, it looks so skinny, but it, it looks good, but it's so thin. It looks frail. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that would be, I think, I think that's a reasonable, um, I think that's a reasonable um, mm -hmm. criticism, but this is what you got to do. This is what you got to think. It's actually not a criticism. Um, no. It's not a mistake, I should say. It's a criticism, but it's not a mistake. Um, this is the loser. So the the whites. This is this. This is the the white stag here. Is this stag here? Um, so he gets he gets the girl, as it were. Um, so the fact that like this guy is like you see him, he's higher. He's superior, he's elevated, he's on, you know, he's a um, bolder figure, you see more of him. Um, he's winning. And this guy is essentially like bracing for impact and backing down. So this is the loser. Um, and to, in order to, um, you know, in order to like make that, give it that feel, um, I think it makes more sense to make this leg bent and um almost sickly i mean it's all it, it is sickly so let's see what those shapes are so we have a, a trapezoid for the uh elbow to wrist the wrist is bent almost like it, it's almost like a diamond shape at that joint and then the 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 hourglass of wrist to knuckle is so frail and delicate and thin um that it, it almost looks like it could snap at any second. Right. <clears throat> and then you get the front here. It reminds me, I can't tell the story. There was a, uh, I was, I'll, t I'll tell it, I'll tell it another time. Trevor, remind me, to, remind me to tell you the story of the rocking the boat. Scott rocking the boat. Yes, Dace. Um, I have to run to take Tuck out. Okay. Can there, I show you really, really fast, just to? How are the How are the of, How are the paparazzi today? Are they intense? You know, 
they're not as bad as they were yesterday. So I'm a bit relieved. Yeah, but just to go out a different, just to go out a different door that you went out last time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I think that my legs are way too short. Can you just let me know if that's accurate? Yeah, yeah. Let me stop. Let me stop the share. No, 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 no. I could send it to you. I don't mean. Oh to... yeah, text it to me. Yeah, text okay. it to me. Um, funny thing too, it's hard. I mean, I it's really difficult to have a, like a clear light source. You know, I, I don't know where the light's coming from. You know, usually there's, it's very obvious that, especially when you're drawing out of your imagination to have established that, um, so that you can just, you have that frame of mind to work with. I mean, obviously there's a little bit of shadow. You know, the light's got to be coming from the left side somewhat because this is in shadow. You know, we've got some deeper shadows under here. You know, there's some cast shadow, which is the line that helps us link up, you know, the, the two back legs. All right. Oh, did Stacy leave already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's see, what do you guys think? Okay, so yeah. um, I think, I think, first of all, I think her drawing is really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. The second thing is, I'm trying to get this little, this little light off of here. Um, yeah, the back legs are solid. Um, it's almost like we're at a slightly different vantage point where in this, I feel like we're up looking down. So we, you know, the, you're seeing more of the ground plane. And I think in Stacy's drawing, it was almost like we're more on a side view. So I think if she was able to lay in some, and that's, this is like really helpful. Um, okay, this is also a thing. So you have the tail here, but she's got to move the middle of her pelvis over to the left. Her little butt crack here, which is not actually the butt crack, but it's actually like the pelvic bone that's above the tail. That's got to move over to the left and that'll widen things, some things up. So that'll be helpful. Um, but yes, I think establishing the ground plane by adding those leaves, um, no matter where your feet are, I think the, the feet feel natural. When I look at her drawing, um, they don't feel unnatural I, um, as far as the, you know, yeah, they, they, I think they're in good shape. It's just, it feels like it's floating. I love those antlers. I think she's, and I think by establishing these darker tones, you know, just but true, like truly finishing the drawing, it will go a long way. Is anything standing out for, for you all? Hey. It just doesn't look like it's as tense as, you know, poised for combat as the original. Right. Um, yeah. And it's that might be, it, it might be, it might be like an out of context thing. <clears throat> you know I mean? Yeah. I think that the second deer um, yeah. is going to be the antithesis of, or this will be the antithesis of the, the big deer, of the, of the white deer mm -hmm. for, you know, so for, in order for that to work, um one and I'm, I'm, I think, a, it's, it's a nice gut check for me too i mean like does does mine feel like it's poised for battle i don't know yeah yeah more more i, I think she struggled as most of us did with um getting the head twisted enough right mm -hmm. sort of twisted down enough so rounding this corner yeah and then yeah. angling yeah. yeah i kept going back and making it you know twisting it further and i still yeah. don't know if i got it enough I know, I know. With the yeah. ear down, all the way down across, you know, above the butt. <laughs> okay. That was, that was, that was very helpful. So yeah. in the spirit of, um, in the spirit of Stacy's uh, drawing um, and taking those, uh, you know, it's all, it's all, re it's all revelatory. Um, I'm going to, use this opportunity i mean i'm looking at the distance between my back leg and my front leg you know so like i think my rib cage overall is 
longer. So, I'm, you know, it's like I, there's more, it's either a bigger creature or a slightly different angle. Um, this side plane of the, uh, you know, the, it's, you know, part of what makes this turn the corner is how dark it goes. So it's getting further away from us. Um, but I mean, look at the distance between this hoof and that hoof. I, I think naturally it could be okay because I length, I made my legs bigger. So I, I, I don't think it's that, that is too much of a problem, but I'm going to intentionally think about the ground and make marks to have it, um, have it feel like the ground because the, it, it does have to be seen in context. You know, we, the, the feet only work if there's a ground. The ground doesn't need the deer. You know, we could remove this deer and we could draw the ground. You can't draw the deer without the ground. And these marks are not just zigzags. It was where I was, you know, this, the idea that you've got this, you know, string and then you write, you, you put the beads on the string. Um, the, 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 these marks are not just random marks. Um, they seem to be, you know, strung together with an invisible connector. Um, shadow? Are they, they're shadows, right? Yeah, well, they're shadows and they're texture. So the, the darker the darker marks show the shadow of the texture, the lighter marks show the texture in more light. You know, it's and it's hard and it's not as easy because you, know, you just have to think of you've got to think of um, you know forest, the infinity of the forest floor. Summer tones. Oh Bella, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We have this little gate and she's so scared of it. And it and it actually it did it, it moved on its own, which is like her worst nightmare. Aww. I know. She's such a little she's she's such a little if a lamb and a deer had a baby, mm -hmm. it would be that poodle. <laughs> Meat. Bold, look how bold these shadow lines are. Yeah, you know, and your pencil can only do so much. I mean, he's, he's, it looks like he's using like more of a sanguine. It's a chalk drawing. So chalk is like this. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I think it, it's such a generic term. Like it could be lead, um, but I think it's, it's, it could be charcoal, but it's not, it, you know, I, like black chalk is, it, it's a very generic term and I don't, and it, I think it depends on the country. It depends on the era. Um, it depends on so many things. You know, what, what is in fact black chalk? Is it a stone? Has it been processed? You know, we, like, we don't know. But I think it's somewhere, I think it, the closest thing to black chalk that we have I think is Conte crayon, um, the pencil Conte. And, you know, the pencil Conte is, you know, you can get really thick, broad strokes, and then you turn it a little bit, you can get like a very delicate line. Graphite um, mechanical pencils are a little bit different. Okay. So we'll get the, the head. And then the antlers, these two, look at these two little, these two little spikes. I'm gonna start there. Left side, right side, these two little guys. 
And then we get two big guys. Yeah, so th this is where I'm looking. These little, these lower, these lower jaw fangs. They look, they feel like canines. And then we get the first major uh, point. And that first major point is nice because it gives, it's going to give us the, um, the bottom of those antlers. And then the, the first major point. And then we can come off from, when we come out from there. Um, the, the way he did these antlers to me, um, especially on the left side, um, they feel like, like branches, like leaves on a tree. Yeah. And I think he made, I, I think he made this, I think he made these up too. So we got one small one. in the front and one big one in the front. And then I'm gonna call this next one, the major one. So there's a major swoop that's kind of further extended from the, uh, you know, from the, uh, from the head. And then it goes, um, so we got this one and this one, which is mirrored. Then we got one on the back and we'll do one on the back. So we're getting closer, we're rising up. So we do one on the back, and then we'll come up, we'll do one on the back. And we'll do this next channel, known into the unknown. And we'll do the inner one. This one feels very flame-like where on the other side, it looks like a leaf. Let me keep it flamey. And then at the end, it feels like there's a uh, one, two, three. So the final, the final antler feels like it's got three tips Let's try it on here. One in the middle, one in the back, and one on the side. The middle tip is in shadow and it runs down the whole back end. And then the major one that's in shadow as well. That wasn't too hard to keep straight. And you know that was that was the there's the spirit of the antlers. Well, it's like the letter of the antlers. So like copying each um, copying each point exact is the letter. Um, you know, some might be thick, some might be thin. That's more the spirit of it. And you don't want to, um, you, you can't violate each one too much. You can violate the spirit a little bit. Um, you know, meaning that you could add some if you, you know, you could, you could make it one, you know, look like a leaf, make one look like a flame. That's the spirit of it. And then the letter of it, if you want, you know, you can violate that a little bit um, in the sense that you can add more points if you wanted. Um, but if you, if you deviate too much from either the spirit or the letter, um, you start to move into a realm of, um, you know, a range of dither that would make the, it make it not look like antlers anymore. And when you look at an artist who's already kind of pushing the limits of the uh, of the of the both the spirit and the letter, um, you might want to not deviate too much, because then it, then it'll look weird.
and won't look like antlers anymore. I'm pretty happy though. Let me zoom out. My deer is so large. It fits just barely. Um, do you want to let's do it's 10 38 let's do like five more minutes and see if we can um i mean that was the last that was the, that was like that was the last component of this deer so i think it need we need to like add a little bit of icing on this on this um you know kind of review some of the the tones, um, there's this really, I mean, the, the neck is just spectacular on its, um, you know, the, the line weight and the line thickness, how it, you know, turns down the far side of the neck. Like, look how it, like, you know, it, it, you hit the top and then it drops so fast down that side. Um, we'll just add, we'll, we'll just add some colors, add some, not some colors, add some tones improve the marks, you know, mid-tones, you know, this whole underplane. You know, if you think about it, the, you know, the back rear end is a light. The top of the spine is light. Maybe the top of the ear, um, you know, that one part of the ear is light. So, you know, if you're, if the majority of your deer is, um, you know, light meaning doesn't have tone um we should you should reconsider that because in order for this you know in order for that thigh pelvis to um stand you know the the, the pelvis rather to stand out everything else is going to have tone and it might be subtle but it's there i mean it's it's knocked down this is a, this is a you know, when you're drawing a gray animal or a gray object and you have graphite, which is a gray metal, um, it's, it's kind of nice. You know, you don't want to draw, you don't want to draw a cardinal with a pencil, you know, with like a graphite pencil. You want to draw a rhinoceros with a graphite pencil or an elephant. because it's almost as if you're coloring it because the colors are actually the same. And the black chalk does does go darker, at least how this one is printed. Um, but don't don't uh, don't underestimate your graphite. Graphite can go. Graphite can get pretty dark. It's not going to get you know as dark. <clears throat> oh wow okay so um i just analyzed it enough you know where you just you those things that are, were there the whole time but you just you're just blind to them but um i was looking at the ground and 
you get to see the beginning of the other stag's leg, you know, in the negative space between. Oh yeah. The. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, okay, Stace, so yeah, while you were gone, we figured out, uh, you know, we figured out what you needed for your drawing. <laughs> oh, and so did I. Let me see if I got it. Okay. Okay. So I think that mine looked more like a bull because um, the legs were far too short. So Hold on. I have- Hold on. I'm pulling it up, I'm pulling it up so everybody can talk. Okay. Okay, so I elongated the um, right arm and the right rear leg. And um, I completely adjusted, uh -huh. I'm sorry? I said, uh-huh. Oh, and uh, since I came back from Tucker, that's the first adjustment I've made. But the other thing that uh, I was gonna say is that maybe my head is up a little too high. Hmm. But anyway, Maybe. my legs were definitely too short. Um, so and I brought, my, yeah. And you said, and you what? So I brought those two legs much closer to the viewer. Got so it. So I elongated them and they're, I think, much, much better. Good. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, this leg felt like it got extended a little bit, but like that also fit nicely with the proportion, with the, with the foreshortening. So like this leg is kind of longer and you're kind of seeing it more from the side. And then this one is more scrunched up. So the only thing that I was saying was that, you know, when you, when you're sketching animals, um, that are on the ground, you know, or you're sketching the ground, you know, the ground doesn't need the animals, the animals, the, need, the animals need the ground. So I would go in and start to like actually pepper the, the the ground with you know strings of texture, which also simultaneously offer um, shadows. You know what I mean? So you can add in the shadow marks, add in the texture from the forest floor, um, and you establish a ground plane um, where you know the, the the exact positioning of your feet relative to one another don't feel off enough that I would like change it too much, you know, like, and you know, yes, are your legs a little short? So he be, appears to be a little bit stockier. Yes. But like, I also, I mean, I also, you know, I also made mine too long. You made yours a little too short, whatever. I mean, I think they're, I think it's well within the range of, of dither. Like, I think it works with it. Um, you know, this turning the corner here, um, you know, it's hard to tell whether, you have like five or six lines for the edge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, is which one is it? Is it the inside okay. one? Or is it the outside one? And you don't, I did, you don't necessarily have to decide, but that I if, did when clean we, that up. Yeah, I when did, we, I when you put to mention. In, and when if we put in the the environment in the background, you can cover a lot of sins in that way too. Um, and that's what's that's what I think the ground plane will do too. Is like we'll firmly establish your deer in its in its environment so it'll it'll be part of its own dimension you know and, and the ground is really important for that rather than kind of like floating there so you know nothing is really far out of the range except for the um the root of the tail see this little notch right there that's mm -hmm. gonna that's gonna come over to the left more um yeah so Where it's like, i originally be, had it probably yeah probably yeah are you using pencil or pen? I'm using a uh, pencil, graphite. Yeah, that's what. That's a really nice dark. Uh, your but marks. I'm are, going hard. Your I'm, marks I'm, are fantastic. You know what I mean? The style of it is awesome. What were you gonna say? I'm working really hard for some reason this morning. Like uh, uh, pressure hard. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I love it. I love those bold, the bold strokes, and I, I like the um, even like these little ghosts of. Uh, you know, the antlers where you moved them down, you know, the, those yeah. ghosts are great. I mean, they, they, they really help with the drawing and they, they show your expo exploration simultaneously making it, you know, feel like they're moving a little bit, you know, like it went from that top position and angled further, you know, sort of like the Dumbo, like kind of like the, you know, showing the direction that the, the, you know, if, if there were, um, if the, the head was moving down, which is the trail lines will be above. 
So it it okay. fits with it fits directionally with like the spirit of the pose. So that's okay. great. And I did I did clean up the neck, uh, the neck head, yeah. outer line. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back I, and I, make I need those to adjustments too. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, and I don't think it's about changing what you have. I think it's just um, adding, adding, adding more to make what you have stronger. Definitely. So I typically do my ground plane last, and if I'm understanding you correctly, it it may be helpful not to wait to do that last. Yeah. Yeah. Get it sooner. Get it in sooner than later. Okay. I mean, whatever, you know, whenever you feel comfortable. I'm gonna tape this down because I'm sick of it moving up and down. Oh my God, it's so much better. So much better. All I did was tape my paper. I was like, it was sandwiched. So it kept like, it was like a card really like wanting to open and I taped it down and now it's, oh my God, I feel like I can think. I didn't even think before. So I guess we should have, I think we should have a part two. Are, are you up for, uh, you know, Potter's Deer part two? Yeah. Okay, we, sure. Yeah. We'll have to I, in the second I just, one. I don't know if we, I mean, I don't, we can't do the whole white stag in 10 minutes. No. Can yeah, we, I'm um, going to get to the white stag. What's Before that? I'm on. dying to get to the white stag. I'm, dy I'm dying to get to the white stag too. Yeah. The question is, we should, we, should we just do a, should we do a, a bonus class tomorrow? Uh, no, I can't. I, I can't. can't. <laughs> okay. Um, well, do you want to do it next Thursday? But what if something happens? I feel like I, I need to do it. I feel like I need to do it sooner than later or else it'll never get done. Well, can we have a show while you're thinking and talking about it? Yeah. And there was a book that I couldn't read called The White Stag. Um, it, it was like when I was learning how to read and it was so hard. It was so hard, but I loved the book. So the parts that I read, they were like ecstasy. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't read very well. And like, you know, in like middle school, you just keep, you know, you, you read a book and you move on, read a book and you move on. You're just like, there's no, like, I feel like I never got caught up with my reading ever my entire Aww. career. But I always wanted to go back and I was like, someday when I can read, I'll go back and read The White Stag. So I might do that, right? I might do that today. Are you pinning? I am pinning, hold on. Yeah, his whole head looks so much better now. Thank you. So Kristen says when I get a haircut. Okay. I'm going to stop the share. Um, who wants to go? Maureen, you want to go? You know, my camera, you know, you said doesn't work all that great. So I'm not sure if you can even see it. <laughs> Oh, we can see it. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. oh, that's but so I don't, soft. I don't, it's not dark enough. I'm just using a little, you know. Yeah, mechanical pencil. Yeah, as far as you can get. I need it to go back and reads, darken it. It almost reads like watercolor. Yeah. Really? Yeah, to me, a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. Go hold you hold up again. Really? I'm I want to see it in the context of watercolor. Yeah, it's really, it's really, it's a gentle, it's very gentle. Right. Mm -hmm. I almost like, I also don't, the, the, the treatment of it, I almost don't want to see it in battle, you know? <laughs> right, right. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't want to see a scratch on it. You know, bring in a right. peace negotiator there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Maureen, the, if you look at the, if you start at the bottom of the ears, like the angle of the ears, yeah. and then and the angle of the root of the um, antlers where they both start on the head, 
And then you look at the tip to tip on the angle of the, the, the very tips of the antlers. Yeah. They, the top, the top antler can be tilted a little bit further. Yeah, and that's, I, I thought so too. I feel like it's tilted way further. Yeah. And, and maybe it's just this, maybe it's just the size of the antlers. You know, the right antler might be a larger object than the left antler. Well, I was just looking at the, at the photo that I have here and it looks like the right side goes it up higher. Bigger. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It is a big. So I kept adjusting it, but I, I need to. You're right. That that's the part that was bugging me. Yeah, when and then moving from. Yeah, I was just looking at the drawing too, and then seeing the like the how much comparing the antlers that we just drew. Yeah. Compare those antlers to the white stag, and that white stag's antlers, even though they're further away, they're even bigger. Bigger, right? Yeah. yeah so I think. I, I got to tone them down. Everything about the white stag is going to be more grand. So if you, when we get into the second part, if you're erroring um, at all, may, yeah. error on making the white stag bigger, more imposing, more majestic, um, and you know the winner of the bat of <laughs> the fight. You know that well, that's the narrative. Okay. <clears throat> Um, all right, uh, Adele, I've got you next. Thanks for showing, uh, Maureen. Nice. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Oh, great. That's Good a angle. Lot. Yeah. Very <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't. I can't even Beautiful. say anything. It looks so much better mm. than his. Beautiful. Really? Yeah, yours is better than his. <laughs> well, all. it took. It took several tries to get the head bent over yeah, enough. I, I get yeah. that. I kept changing right. the head too. Yeah, I think we all struggled with that. Uh-huh. Yeah, so so uh, nice. Too, and I, the, um, sorry, Stace, what's that? I was just going to say that the um the negative space that you've created from the very top of the head down the spine over the rump um really mm. gives that nice curvature of the whole animal yeah, or what is yeah. the word i want the whole like spine is that what i want i want to say um i like it really like it <laughs> well, the, along along those lines that particular part of the picture the 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 the, the um the shape of the the tail, the shape of the ear, the shape of the um, the antler, you know, the antler spike, all of them kind of, you know, vibing similarly, being distinctly different, uh, like objects. I mean, they're all very different objects that do very different things, um, and they're working kind of in conjunction with each other to create what Stacy was saying that the negative space and the, mm -hmm. the space between the legs, the space between. Um, you know, the, the body and the antlers, um, those, that as an object in and of itself is, um, yeah. as an yeah, art piece thank itself you. is beautiful. <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it was great. Um, cool. All right, Grace, how about yours? Did you have any, oh, Adele, did you have any comments or anything? Sorry? Did you have any comments about it? No, I just, um, as usual, my drawing just feels overworked because I, I go over it so much. Yeah, but that's yeah. I think that's a long term issue for me. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, the a solution to that um, is like moving from one phase of the project into another, like actually moving it into a watercolor phase or moving it into an oil painting phase so that you have to do it again. It's almost like a piece of music that, you know, you you bang, you read it, you read it from the sheet music once and you can hammer your way through it. And if it's a Christmas song and everybody's singing along and you're really talented, you can, you can get through the song having never played it before, but it's going to be clunky and not so smooth. And then you can just, once you've learned the song and practiced it three or four times, then you can play it straight through and you can even put your own little twist on it. And, you know, that's where you would, that's, that, that's what I'm thinking with, if you didn't want your pieces to be overworked in that sense, you would have to draw it three times. Yeah. And third and fourth time having done it, your every move is anticipated in the sense that you're almost drawing it from memory. You're not drawing it from mm -hmm. you know, into like a, a discovery mode. You're drawing it through a, um, you know, through having muscle memory and mm -hmm. it'll be smoother and not overworked. 
I have to I have to force myself to do that sometime because I well, get impatient. Well, and, and I don't really and, want to redo the same thing. But you're right. Exactly. That's exactly what 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 needs to happen. Find, find a um, find a subject that's from nature. So like it could be a tree, it could be a banana, it could be a cat, it could be whatever it is, whatever whatever winds up becoming your own art, like your own independent study, then do it three times with that. You know, because then it's original discovery mode, and then it becomes actually your own. It, it's all your own, mm -hmm. um, and it's easier. I think it's easier to the the point. The fun of copying is the discovery. You know what I mean? After that, you know, it's it's not as satisfying. You know, it's like the the intellectual exercise is over when you draw from nature, chosen for your own reasons and your own purposes. Um, it it's deep. It's a deeper connect. It's a deeper just mm -hmm. deeper reason, and so the repetition can be, you know, more natural mm -hmm. and not like interesting. Boring. Yeah, thank you. That's very very useful. Good. Um, all right, Grace. Sorry that you're up. Please pin. Ooh. Oh, that's, good. that's nice. Yeah, it's a really harmonious balance of marks. Yeah. Yeah. The marks are dark. really resolved. Very nice. You got his you got his belly perfect, it looks like. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that looks like it looks like a cell from uh like <laughs> like, an, like from an early, like a, an early, really masterful like Disney illustration. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it not, not, not to take away from it. That's not, it's on my no. Okay. Yeah, that's lovely. That's Is my, <laughs> I kept thickening the neck. Do you, did I get it thick enough? Um, yeah, definitely. So. Um, okay. Yeah, to the point where I would almost, maybe even. Too thick? Reduce, too thick, maybe. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the dark line, maybe it's move it in just one line shape. I don't know. It, I, it's, it's too hard to say. I, it looks it, really good. I mean, and maybe it's, um, so maybe it's not the thickness on the outside. If you look at the center, you know, the main sort of, of the like mm -hmm. the middle of the spine, um, mm -hmm. those marks on in his drawing are, are darker. So maybe if, by extending those har those horizontal lines of the shade of the middle of the spine, it might make the shape of the right side appear smaller. Oh, so yes. it, might, it might actually be the right contour. It might be the internal structure that could be a little bit off, but that is like so nitpicking. And that's, yeah, I didn't, okay. yeah, it's a nitpick and, and I don't want it to get into the, the drawing itself is just so beautiful. And that's what's so neat when everybody everybody's own style and personality come through mm -hmm. um, you know being derivative of this it's just like it's a testament to the to, to the artist and a testament to you all um okay um stephanie back in it back in it <laughs> hello stephanie's oh, back. looking forward to seeing yours wow <laughs> oh my goodness it's over you, um but that's Hold how that I a work. little bit closer yeah. to you. Um, a little closer to uh, to the screen and freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Freeze, freeze. freeze. It's, really good. it's good. Yeah. And it has Beautiful. the it, it has the action, like it has the movement, it has the tension. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, it has the spirit of the pose, I think, you mm -hmm. know, um, really well. You know, and there is, and there is. And even like the the, ac the activity of the mark making is is yeah. more similar to the way that Potter works, and I think mm -hmm. that mark and the excited mark making um, lends mm -hmm. itself really well to the um, to the narrative that's being portrayed. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's I guess that was sort of in, on my mind as I did it was this guy's in the fight for his life. Yeah, so, it yeah. really <laughs> and it really comes through. Yeah, it really comes through. <laughs> Oh. I've missed your exuberant ah. lines. Oh, thank you. <laughs> miss being with everybody. I'm, I'll try to be here next week. The following week, I have a knee replacement surgery. Yay. Oh, so oh yeah. I hope all goes but I'm well. going to try to keep coming. I also I have to teach on Thursdays myself, so wow. it's a little crazy. But I'm going to do my best. Good. Oh, yeah. Have you back? I'm good. Really good. Became a grandmother. Oh, so. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. So, yeah, that's huge. Yeah.
Yeah. Wonderful. So, all good. Yeah. Yes. You got to sketch. You got to sketch that baby. I know. I need to. That's need right. To. Yeah. He's he's a funny guy. So. <laughs> um, all right, Stace. Let's see. Did you, get, did you get through your replace your uh, repairs? Uh, well, just the neck. That's all. So yeah. I'd rather see yours again, your end product. Can I do? Can we? Yeah, yeah, but let, yeah. But show yours again. I just let me see. I didn't. I just did the the line on the butt and the neck. Ooh, mm. yeah, definitely. Whoa, yeah, that 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 definitely changed the drawing. Doesn't even it look like the same one. Yeah. Holy crap! Nice. It reads better. I hope. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. That's great. Out. Thanks. So, you're welcome, Stephanie. Um, okay, thank you. We, I do want to. Um, I this does have to have a part two. Um, should we do it next yeah. week? You want to wait mean, until next Thursday? Um, okay. okay. Yeah, let's do it. And then um, there is so much more to this too. So next week we'll be able to finish the deer. It'll be less scary. Um, and then we can put some of these like, abbreviated deer in the background and I'll have the whole image be a high definition version of the whole image sent over too. Okay. We'll Thanks. Do it. I have to see ya. Bye y'all. Yeah. Thank you so Bye, much, Trevor. Oh, you're so welcome, Stace. Bye y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.